Shares of Coveo are popping after the company narrowed its losses and grew revenue by 16 percent. The AI for Enterprise company recently unveiled its generative artificial intelligence solution and says demand looks promising. Let's bring in Louis Tetu, chairman and CEO of Coveo. Louis, it is always a pleasure to uh, have you on the show. And I noted that on your conference call, I think every single question was about generative AI. Um, and I'm afraid I don't think this interview is going to be much different. Uh, why don't you tell us about, you know, you've said you've been doing artificial intelligence for a long time, but you are unveiling a new generative artificial intelligence product. Talk to us about, you know, what went into that. Well, uh, you know, uh, Coveo has been in the business of uh, applying artificial intelligence to uh, digital experiences in the enterprise uh, across commerce websites uh, customer service and workplace for more than a decade. We started in machine learning in 2011. Uh, back then, you know, I don't think, I don't think until Chad GPT, um, you know, most people realized that AI um, drives a fundamentally different paradigm uh, in in digital experiences. In the enterprise, uh, specifically, uh, it's a little bit different than uh, writing a poem on an iPhone using <laughs> ChatGPT. You have to uh, be able to control and manage the guardrails uh, associated with security. You can't obviously breach permissions, and uh, and you have to be truthful. You know, large brands and most brands cannot hallucinate, and um, and you have to make sure that uh, everything is traceable and et cetera. And essentially, Coveo, Coveo has, has solved this problem. We've been working with large language models now for a couple of years, and so this is not entirely new to us. Uh, as a technology, and uh, and we obviously have the software abilities to uh, resolve the the problems, which are very similar to the problems we've uh, we've resolved for large corporations, uh, hundreds of large corporations across the world, uh, and that really built up the Coveo reputation. Not new to you, but new to the world, as you mentioned, with kind of that Chat GPT bursting onto the scene. Would you be here today with this product launch? ready to go had it not been for ChatGPT? Well, as I mentioned, ChatGPT took the world by storm. And, and, and again, it was really a catalyst. Uh, you know, I, I guess, you know, if I go back 10 years ago, you know, Coveo perhaps was a little bit preaching in the desert. You know, our, we, were, we were already delivering, uh, using AI to deliver high degrees of personalization. Uh, similar to the experiences you get, you know, at Netflix, Amazon, or Spotify, or or Wayfair, or many other companies, uh, I'm not sure. Generally speaking, companies understood uh, the difference between, you know, managing persona and really delivering to persons. You know, how do you deliver a million different experiences to a million different individuals? And um, and so we've been able to bring that. Uh, and and over time, initially, the early adopters of COVID they were all the tech companies, mostly of Silicon Valley's. Uh, most of the large tech companies are our customers because they understood probably a little earlier than most uh, the importance of AI in terms of delivering the, expect the, the experiences online that people truly expect um, in terms of, of high degrees of individu individualization. And, and now Chad GPT really has been the catalyst that made people understand that, oh, you know, um, not only can I get an, an, an individualized experience, but now Chad GPT and generative AI take it to the next level, which is really, I can, I can get an answer, not just a link to results. I can, I can engage in a conversation. Um, but it's all good, you know, until until enterprises realize that, hey, they deal with data that is secure and they deal with uh, they, they need to deliver truthful answers. And uh, and this is what we're here for. You have been going after growth, not at any cost. You have often talked to me uh, about expense discipline, about being efficient. And I wonder if you're tempted at all to maybe not do it that way, because the market seems very forgiving of AI companies who want to pursue growth. And if you want to run losses and throw money at innovation, then now is the right time to do that. 
I think no. I think I think you can expect us to do both. Coveo has a management team that has been, um, you know, ran a few public companies and uh, and etc. Uh, both fiscal discipline as well as growth and innovation all go hand in hand together. We're very proud that uh, uh, our first fiscal quarter we delivered uh, 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 SaaS revenue growth of of 20 percent. That was ahead of our guidance. We delivered adjusted operating loss that was way ahead of our. our our guidance and three times less than last year and really driving towards uh, the profitability of the company uh, this next uh, fiscal year. Um, and, and, you know, at the same time, we're investing, uh, but the investments for us in generative AI in particular and everything we do in commerce, uh, working with SAP in particular and in B2B commerce to create AI algorithms to optimize margins and things of that nature. This is a natural evolution of our innovation. Um, you know, we, Coveo is one single platform, software platform, and we, for us, the innovation is incremental. So there's no big bang. Um, you know, investment, um, you know, it is the cumulative work of, 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 of more than a dozen years in AI working with some of the largest data sets of customers in the world. And, um, and we just continue. So for us, it's an increment and mm -hmm. you can expect us to continue that innovation and invest in that innovation aggressively while making sure that uh, we, make, we make the financial equation work and, uh, and at a high growth. And, um, and that's what we get paid for uh, on behalf half of the shareholders and we're going to continue to do that. Sales grew 16%, but it looks like your forecast for revenue growth calls for 10 to 12% growth. Seems like a slowdown. Why why the slowdown if there's all this interest in in generative AI? Yeah, we've provided guidance that uh, excludes, in fact, uh, for the most part, uh, the revenue impact this year on um, generative AI because we think the revenue from generative AI, despite the incredible interest that we had, uh, we have more than 45 large enterprise and global enterprise customers involved in our beta program, which is, you know, is, is unprecedented in terms of interest uh, for us. Um, but but the impact of revenue will happen towards more of the back half of the year and will have minimal impact. You know, we're I, I think I think we still are like any other com software companies. If you listen to the service nows of this world and other software companies, we still in the software industry feel um, the macroeconomic backdrop and uh, and a bit of uncertainty. Deals are you know we we win the preference of customers, but they don't they, they, the the deals the closings sometimes get stalled a little bit and so on. So as always, we're prudent. You know, since our IPO, we've been able to exceed guidance every time and expectations. And uh, we kind of like to make sure, we kind of want to make sure investors understand that uh, we maintain that discipline. And uh, we'll see we'll see what happens with uh, things that sometimes are a little outside of our control. Um, but the fact remains that, um, you know, the application of artificial intelligence in digital experiences for large enterprises is a very, very uh, fast moving and growing and, uh, and promising industry. I only have about 30 seconds left, but how's the hunt for talent? You know, the, the talent market has improved uh, really uh, for employers like us. If I look at uh, the pandemic and, uh, you know, uh, shortly after the pandemic days, uh, you know, it's, it's a much better climate. It's a much better environment to hire, of course. Uh, you know, <clears throat> we hire people who are high in demand, um, you know, uh, but we also are one of the rare companies to actually deliver with real customers on on uh, on very advanced AI technology in the enterprise. And so that obviously uh, makes us attractive as an employer. We try to treat our employees very well. We try to foster a culture of, uh, of engagement and growth and excellence. And that all contributes to um, a pretty good position. Uh, you know, uh, when we look at our our uh, natural attrition uh, metrics and so on, which have gone down dramatically since the pandemic, and so overall for us, it's been um, it's it's a much better talent climate. All right.